So, I thought today would be a good chance to talk about the death of John McAfee, if it happened, and if uh, he did indeed kill himself, because... As y'all may know, I am a conspiracy theorist, and my brain kind of ticked a little bit. Um, but before we get into any of that, I, I wanted to touch briefly on what I knew of, well, what I know of his history. And that is that he basically uh, launched uh, what was at the time a very good product, and I think maybe the first antivirus uh, software for um, uh, computers and what this what this software made computers capable of doing was just a ton more network traffic because suddenly you had something monitoring and preventing your computer from being damaged um, that's pretty good on its own um, and then if I recall correctly, he, like, sold his shares at some point, uh, like, basically got the fuck out, uh, with his money, and later on eventually ended up moving to Belize, where he, uh, basically got involved in making, uh, what he said was a topical antiseptic that the drug companies in the area were accusing him of making, like, illegal antibiotics. So they raided him under the guise that he was also running a meth lab. Um, <laughs> and then there was, a, there was a scuffle. Like, his, his neighbor uh, allegedly poisoned his dog. Um, and then John McAfee was blamed for a subsequent murder, which maybe he did. I don't know. I wasn't there. But neither were any of the people who blamed him. So, basically, they were, like, from my perspective, trying to set him up. Um, and ultimately, uh, the, the, the way it turned out was the um, powers that should not be um, ended up chasing him out of Belize. Um, and he had to, like, hide himself on social media and then get, like, smuggled out of the country. Uh, it would, there was a whole big thing about that. And then, something similar happened not too long later. But I'll get to that a little bit later. He ran, uh, for president under the Libertarian Party ticket. But he ran um, with the vote different, I think it was, differently, something like that. Um, hashtag. And what his whole deal was, was talking about the harder core, actual libertarian principles. This is where I came in to actually start to really like John McAfee. Because he was saying things like, War is murder, taxation is theft. Maybe we shouldn't be serving this omniscient, omnipotent state that invades our privacy and enslaves us. Maybe we should take the power into our own hands and finally start to shift away from the state. And, uh, <laughs> wouldn't you know it, that made the government mad, him. So... What they started to do, I believe, at that point, is track what he was doing with cryptocurrency, because that was what he advocated as the way to get your personal finances off the state grid. And he's right. You can do that relatively easily. Uh, if you use something like Wasabi uh, or Samurai, uh, you can fuck up your Bitcoin transactions so that they can't see it. Uh, if you use Monero or other privacy coins like it, Pirate Chain, for instance, you can do the same fucking shit natively. If you use Bitcoin Cash, you got cash shuffling. You got fucking options. So he's not actually wrong. But he was still preaching an overtly libertarian message. And 
let me just tell you for a second here. Um, there were so many libertarians who weren't. Libertarians who weren't at the time. Um, a good example, I think, would be uh, Austin Peterson, uh, who went so far as to say that the NAP um, is an ANCAP suicide pact, to me personally, and to oppose it at the convention. Um, <laughs> and why did he fucking say that? Well, because I had the audacity to say that maybe the U.S. shouldn't have dropped two nuclear fucking bombs on Japan. And he still brings this shit up regularly. It's like his fucking ritual, you know? I've got to be just as big a douchebag as possible as, 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 as like, I can all the fucking time about uh, killing <laughs> that many Japanese people at once. Because uh, libertarians don't look jingoistic and xenophobic enough. We've got to make it about that. Uh, but just to be completely specific, um, the, the general vibe that I got from, uh, from, from the, the, the convention that year, um, was nobody was actually interested in being libertarian. Um, the two examples I think that stood out were Daryl Perry and John McAfee. And Daryl Perry, uh, like, has less experience and less of an interesting backstory than John McAfee. So politically, it goes to John McAfee. Now, Daryl Perry, make no mistake, he is very principled. And I love the fact that he focuses on anti-war stuff as well. That's very good. Um, but, but to be very specific, John McAfee stole the show. And a bunch of right libertarians didn't like what he said in his exit speech when he wasn't nominated by the inner circle jerk of, of the Libertarian Party. Uh, which, by the way, is exactly why I don't participate in libertarian fucking politics. Because I'm not going to try to worm my, my way in and appeal to that inner circle jerk. And what John McAfee had the audacity to say is that maybe libertarians should try a little harder to get black people and women involved. So, a bunch of right libertarians basically wrote somebody off. Right libertarians. Essentially wrote somebody off who was anti-tax, anti-war, anti-police brutality, anti-all the stuff the state loves to force down our collective throats. They voted this guy off uh, after he'd already been voted off the reservation because they didn't like that he made them uncomfortable about race relations. And all he was trying to do is talk unity. Now, fuck those people. Um, I don't necessarily agree with how he phrased it, but he's not wrong. And anyone who's been watching my videos on libertarianism uh, and libertarians in, in, in the party and in general knows that for a fact that libertarians have a significant problem uh, with shall we say, entryism and right-wing uh, infiltration. Authoritarian right-wing infiltration. Um, and maybe, like, should deal with that. But he, he got written off as a SJW cuck boy or whatever by a bunch of, like, basementers that don't actually do anything. Um even though he was using his sizable money and platform to be one of the most consistent libertarian candidates in history. Uh, just thought I'd throw that in there. Because that's a reason, a key reason, that a significant amount of libertarians wrote him off in a libertarian context. And again, fuck those people. Um... And then he, he went in um, and did it again, the mad lad, four years later, 
with his Don't Vote for McAfee campaign. And it, it was really good. He was again talking about how the system is corrupt, but this time he had seen it from the inside from the most principled party, and he was calling them all on their bullshit, and that's why his campaign was Don't Vote for Me. I'm just here to spread the message, and if you don't like it, you can eat shit. And he got progressively more and more extreme going on. He got progressively more and more, like, into it moving forward. That's really good. I like that. And I think a lot of other people did, too. Especially considering the fact that he was willing to appeal to an anime audience... Uh, young people and, you know, more people that the Libertarian Party consistently gives the shaft. Like, you want to talk about real, like, raw revolution? It's not going to come from the old guard. It's not going to come from the people that have already tried it and not succeeded, but this time in bigger numbers. It's going to come from a new approach, an approach that tells people that they can have that power as long as they take it. They're not going to ask for it. That's what real libertarianism is. It's taking the power for yourself. Which is why John McAfee was a base libertarian. Again, assuming he's dead. And his whole message for the past uh, years has been basically... Get involved in cryptocurrency, learn how encryption and cryptography work, um, and become your own savior. Stop waiting for other people to save yourself, and do it yourself, because you can. He was basically the laughingstock of a significant portion of the media who saw him nothing more than a stunt. Because those people are fucking stupid and obsequious. They didn't understand that what he was doing was providing a template for resistance. All you gotta do is behave in a somewhat similar fashion to him. I think you can avoid the bath salts. But in a somewhat similar fashion to him, and you can attain some level of freedom. Now, just to also say something, he was 75 when he died, as far as I remember. And, like, that's a long time to live. So he was freer than most people for longer than many people will even get to live. Because he freed his mind. And because he stopped doing what the motherfuckers told him to. That is better than anything Gary Johnson has ever done for libertarianism. Period. 100%. Also... He pulled himself up by the bootstraps before any of this, putting together a model for virus protection to come so that people could protect their computers, which means he knows computers. He knows, well, knew, how things work in that regard, and he knew that cryptocurrencies and cryptography are the future. That they're the way people can, not necessarily will, but can, in theory and in practice, liberate themselves. If they use it right. Um, now, he hit some bumps in the road because um, the state is a gang of thieves writ large and a blood-sucking tyrant of a fucking parasite clutch that constantly requires new human sacrifices in order to continue doing what they do. The state doesn't care that what you're doing is ethical. They don't care that what you're doing is reasonable. They don't care that what you're doing provides greater levels of freedom and comfort and reason to people. They don't give a fuck about that. They want you to bow down and lick the boots no matter what. Um, and because of that, they were going to look at what he was doing as illegal because they had no moral ground to stand on. And they were going to track him 
and track him they did until they caught him. But this wasn't until he literally ran from them on a fucking boat. He pulled GTA on them. He fucking went out into the middle of the ocean and regularly changed his location until he needed to stop for fuel or repairs or something, I think. And he just kept going. He had fled Belize already. He had fled uh, U.S. uh, fucking surveillance once already. He had fled many things already, and he knew how to do it. He then fucking went all the way uh, to his own Faraday cage room. Long time followers um, might remember me making uh, a regular reference to this, because I always say that a tinfoil hat is incredibly stupid. Uh, If you're trying to uh, block signals, uh, a dome made of conductive metal on your head is, like, not a good idea. Because that's just going to act like a satellite dish and fucking catch whatever signal is there and isolate it under the dome. That's what it's going to do. So, I say... Uh, if you if you are a true conspiracy theorist, if you really think that somebody's out to get you and you need to hide from signals, don't use a tinfoil hat. In fact, anybody that tells you to use a tinfoil hat for those purposes is either ignorant or complicit in state activities and should be erased from your life. That's the truth. The 100% solid truth and a truth that McAfee understood. Because he hid in a literal metal-coated room for a long fucking period of time whenever he needed to use devices. This is good. Because all of this running allowed him time to build something that I am excited to talk about because it seems like it's going to drop now. He made reference to the fact that if he died in prison, it was not his own doing. Um, that if he died in there, it was somebody else he got whacked. Um, and, (laughs) ha ha, wouldn't you know it, uh, as soon as he's about to be extradited, he gets whacked. Um, and then of course, Ian Miles Chong, being the grifter he is, decides to profit off of it, but whatever, you know, let's just be super specific here and say that, um, there's, there's a reason that McAfee might have gotten whacked. Um, And that reason is simple. Because what you do with that is you look at what he was saying he had. Epstein was an unethical, despicable bastard. Um, And everything he did was to serve the elites. Um, And his entire circle was made of people that he either uh, got from the elites or turned into elites through the art of blackmail. And also, uh, there is every bit of evidence to suggest that Epstein himself was a uh, an intelligence asset. You can read many articles on this subject by people who are familiar with this situation, including uh, one on Daily Beast, which is very good you should read it. But the general notion is that I don't think Epstein killed himself. And I don't think Epstein is dead. Epstein uh, was uh, an intelligence asset, and right before he died, he ordered a fucking dental chair to be sent to his island. Uh, This was after he had been jailed in a luxurious apartment by being allowed to live out his sentence there. And (laughs) if you don't think that's some bullshit, then you haven't been paying attention or, again, you're with them. 
Um, and then after Epstein died, a bunch of transactions happened from his cryptocurrency addresses or bank accounts or something. I can't exactly remember. But at the same time, what happened was suddenly money was transferring away from Epstein while he was no longer alive. Um, this leads people like me, insaniacs, here uh, to spread violent and dangerous theories to the public. Uh, leads me to believe that Epstein is still alive and he transferred assets to an account he can control and pull assets from in the future uh, because he's still alive and because after he got reconstructed a little little he suddenly had the assets necessary to start a new life maybe under witness protection who knows who knows I don't know I know nothing. So, um, just to be incredibly specific, that's one example. Another example is uh, the OBL case, where they just ran into this compound in, in, in the middle of fucking Pakistan and, 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 and did all this stuff under the cover of darkness, and whoopsies, our helicopter went down, and ho-ho, uh, we're not going to take any footage of this, even though we have cameras, and ha-ha, we're not going to, you know, disclose any information about it, and hee-hee, he didn't use his wife as a human shield or anything, even though he's a toxic and callous and hostile and terrible person, and ha-ha-ha-ha, um, they're not going to release any information on it because they don't want to talk about the fact that they threw somebody in the ocean for the first time ever as a way of burying them after killing them on an assignment. Yeah, that's not suspicious at all. It's also not suspicious that, that, he, that, he, that he was Tim Osmond before and that the CIA had, through Operation Cyclone, funded his camp through Coast. Um... And, 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 like, the whole thing is suspicious as fuck. Because when you suddenly have the, uh, the guy who was funded by the CIA and equipped by the CIA to train Mujahideen on the run because he's a terror threat, um because of an attack that totally has no discrepancies in the official story or anything, uh, suddenly, you lose his body in the ocean. I fucking wonder why. So, just to be clear, I'm not trying to imply that McAfee is an asset. I'm just... I'm lending credence to the idea that the official story we're being told about him being about to be extradited and doing the whole herky-jerky over the fucking floor of his prison cell ain't the quite believable given their track record which is extremely bad so ultimately i don't believe them i don't believe that he's dead but if he is dead i don't believe it was suicide all right and 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 here's the other fun part he's got a dead man switch which appears to have activated with some massive activity coming to and from an Ethereum address called Epstein. Huh. I wonder if he's about to unveil a bunch of stuff about the Epstein case. Maybe. Maybe. Who knows? I don't know. I know nothing. So... Just to get to the heart of the issue here, uh, I think there's going to be a fuck ton of good shit coming out of that leak, and I can't wait for it to drop, because he warned them. And if he truly is dead, they're about to find out what happens when you fuck with a free man. Probably. Most likely. And just one last thing. Because I don't want this to go overlooked. If he did kill himself. Um, which, again, I have my doubts as to all the tears of this story. But if he did indeed do it, and he wasn't killed, and he's not still alive, I will bet money 
that what we're dealing with here is an extreme depression from not only the lack of drugs that he had been exposing himself to for a significant period of time, but uh, the just general crushing negativity that comes with knowing that you can be a very free person and lay out the blueprint for a whole fuck of people and they will find ways to dismiss you. Still, there are still people who don't like McAfee because of his comments at the Libertarian Party convention. Again, for the third time, it can't be overstated. Fuck him. Because if a man who actually did the stuff that libertarians claim to want to do, who actually freed himself and put out the template for freeing other people, who actually gave enough of a shit to lay his life on the proverbial line so many fucking times, who lived the interesting life that people write about in the sci-fi novels that Konkin would uh, publish in his free fanzine uh, or interview people about, those... Uh, are the actions of a real libertarian. And if somebody doesn't like that because the guy said something too left for them, then they don't deserve to call themselves libertarian. Because ultimately, when it comes down to it, they're rejecting real libertarianism because it doesn't have the color they like. Because it isn't in the team they like. That's a fucking problem. It was a problem then, and it's a problem now. People are making serious calls for unity, and those people are getting severely targeted. It's almost like when you go up against the mob, you're gonna get kneecapped if you don't have sufficient people to come up against these people. And it's almost like you're helping the people kneecap us, the people into unity, when you try to oppose us on this score. And we ain't hurting anybody, but you still want us gone for some reason. Huh? I wonder what that is. Recently, uh, Magnus Panvidia's house was raided while he was gone. Uh, many people into the unity movement have been suppressed from social media. <laughs> Historically, unity people have just been killed. People who want actual action against the state, people who are trying to give a fuck, those people get iced. Those people get fucking walked off. Those people get to be pariahs. And it doesn't matter how much action they do. They get fucked in the end. Because the system has trained us. To rely on it for change. And to be divided. Along its lines. Maybe. Instead of falling into this trap. Just like. So many other people have. Maybe. We could fall into the footsteps of people like McAfee in great enough numbers that they cannot jail us all. In great enough numbers that they cannot extradite us all. Because ultimately, he gave us the template. He gave us a good way to approach this. Now, we could improve on that model by being more private about it, and I think we should. No need to get locked up if you don't have to. But just be clear, this is go time. In fact, it's way past go time. The founders would not be content to leave it to tweets. Or Reddit posts or Discord servers, or Facebook. They would not have been content. No revolutionary would have ever been content with what we have now. 
And it is so much worse than it was when revolutions have happened in the past everywhere in the world. I'm not saying what you should do with that info, but what I am saying is that there are practical ways to make yourself freer, and I hope you do. Because ultimately, if people don't do that, if people aren't willing to take those steps, people like him died for nothing. And that would be the real tragedy. So stop being divided on their arbitrary bullshit lines. Unify, free yourself, and smash the fucking state. Rest in peace, McAfee.